It is not a Terminator. It is our oil cooler that had a hole in it. In this episode, we'll show you some of our engine issues, coolant leaks, fuel tank issues, and some basic maintenance of oil, fuel filter, and impeller changes. Looks like more boat project videos. I should have known. Now everything was still new and exciting, so we really didn't mind all the work we were trying to get done, but we were really itching to get out on our first overnight trip, so we got through a few of the projects so we could get to the good stuff, actually enjoying the boat. Stick around till the end of the video for a preview of our first overnight adventure, which will be our next video. Now I'd like to get through this video of boat work, but it's kind of like real work. It's nice to take a break sometimes and just stare at the water to remind you of why you're actually doing this stuff in the first place. Okay, break's over. One of the times we took the boat out, we had a coolant leak from a busted hose going from our water pump housing to our hot water heater. Those red ones right there. Man, this thing's dirty. Easy fix though. All right, new hoses in. Also, you see that nice shiny new sea strainer in the back? Remember the old one? Yuck. Yeah, much better. Next time we took the boat out, we came back with an oil leak from the oil cooler. Not such an easy fix. Now, as long as we don't throw a rod or melt a spark plug next time we go out, we'll be good. That was a joke. No spark plugs in diesels. If you want to know how I melted that spark plug, ask me in the comments. This boat is full of puzzles to figure out, and the cooling system oh, was one of them. The oil lines coming up to that bolt and that one right there. From the sea strainer, water comes up around this corner into the oil cooler. Through that, goes up, comes back down this other line here, or flows back through this way into the heat exchanger. Salt water goes in that way, comes back out, up on the top, through the elbow, the exhaust. Salt water cools the fresh water, or the coolant, that the engine runs off of, but the oil runs through here, down this tube, or up the tube, but back behind here uh, is where it's leaking. So we got it out, brought it over to Claude's, cleaned it up, and did everything we could to repair this thing, as a new one was going to be near $600, and hard yeah. to find. Yeah, right there? Yeah. The hole got welded up, and I added some extra steel stick putty around the whole thing afterwards, just to try to thicken it up for extra. So just for reference, these are 1 and 1 16th inch banjo bolts holding the oil lines in. And all things considered, we really got lucky with this fix. Since we're at the back of the engine, apparently these transmission dipstick tube thingies break easily. Yeah, just like that right there. I was worried about the broken off piece in the transmission, but luckily nothing broke apart and I was able to take it out with a screwdriver without a problem. <laughs> Dipstick. <laughs> Got a new dipstick tube. What else are we doing? I kind of get here and I kind of go blank. You're fixing toilets. Got a new macerator. 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 Macerator pumps. We got lazy jack lines to fix. It's getting windy though. Let's see up to 30. It's supposed to be 30. 37 30s. Gus. Today and tomorrow. So we're, we're not taking the boat out. I'd like the 
experience trying to dock it again because the wind's coming from the complete opposite direction this time. Southwest, it kind of. I'll say this: there's not that many boats on this channel, really. So you just hit people's docks. For... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hit anything. Okay, get to work. Hello. Today is fuel filter day. I've got the primary fuel filters. The starboard side is an R20T Raycor 230. The port side, R24T 220, I believe. All right, you got them bled to right there to those primaries. And then these are, this is the original style fuel filter with the number on it. And this is the Yanmar replacement, which I'm probably just gonna put this one on it and save this one as an extra if I ever need it and order some more of these. So that's next, right there, the secondary. Are you gonna help me? What do you gotta say? Well, your hair looks good. Okay, it's off. See? <laughs> Some projects are just going to be a domino effect and changing fuel filters turned into changing hoses and clamps turned into still needing new washers for this banjo bolt that has a small leak. Leaks. Just can't get away from leaks. Since we're on the fuel system, we did originally have some sludge we had to get out of one of our tanks by circulating the fuel around and using a fishnet to catch the majority of it. We added BioBore, which is a diesel biocide, basically designed to stop weird crap growing in the fuel. Switch it to starboard side tank. And now, there we go. The port side should stop. What you did. So the first time I changed the oil, I used a Harbor Freight hand pump, which took forever. Then I found an old 12 volt pump, which was great, but that also took forever because it was old. So I see some kind of new oil extraction tool in my near future. Today's adventure is the impeller. I already got the cover off of the back. And for some reason, I tried to take those four bolts off and probably broke the oil seal. So hopefully I didn't just cause an oil leak. So after about 10 minutes of trying to pull the old impeller out with pliers and a pick tool, it finally came out. But not before removing the door to get a little more room it seems there's no such thing as an easy job around here. Challenges, challenges. Lots of fun, wonderful challenges. Now this thing looks kind of worn out, but the fact that these raw water pumps are near a grand to buy, it looks just fine to me. Because it works. New impeller in, mark one off the list. Uh, Danielle brought these nice coolie pads to keep us cool. Oh, maybe I was wrong. I think that's for under the engine. Okay, so for those of you who remember me talking about removing both of our refrigeration systems for our built-in fridge that take up all this space above our engine, here it is. If not, I'm basically ditching our AC shore power setup and our engine-driven compressor style setup for a 12 volt DC system like this one right here. I don't have this yet. I just took a video of it to show you how much smaller this system is in comparison. Today is the day of ripping out all of this refrigeration shit. And both of them are already out? Yep. What? This is the second one? This is the AC unit that used to sit? Oh, wow. Holy crap. Dude, this is just one of the two units. For sale, gently used. <laughs> um. Oops. There's a freaking engine in here. What am I going to put here? I don't even know what to put here. Nothing. 
so much room for activities. <laughs> So now that all of that refrigeration stuff is removed, I can't believe how much room is in is in here. And I need to clean this engine, but now I'm like looking forward to cleaning this thing. So the other thing I'm trying to get rid of, this is still part of the refrigeration. So from the back here, man, I got so much more room. So this stuff's going away. So. So from the oil cooler, I need to replace this hose, which has all this garbage on it and goes up to a loop, I guess a vented style loop, which is looped with the other exhaust. And then I need to replace the other hose that comes down and goes back to this side of the oil cooler. And I have new hose, I got plenty of plenty of length for one side and I have another piece which I thought was going to be the perfect length and it's like just too short so always something but getting there all right new hose I got one replaced and I got to order another for this one <laughs> 